Hi everyone. Okay, so first of all, um, my last video did about 10 times better than my average video, so thank you everyone. Especially the 7 people who liked the video, because that's apparently what drives success. So, apparently the series isn't something people like. Now, you might notice that I've got 3 sort of boundaries here. Um, and the reason for that is those are all of the questions that my grandmother had that um, I was able to answer cleanly. Um, but rest assured, she has more questions because I made the videos, she watched them, and then she understood understand this much, now she understands this much, but now that she understands this much, she wants to understand this much. So, there will be more. Anyway, um, user-made scripts versus editor-provided scripts. I've explained that one a little bit previously, but let's just go through it again. So, here is a character body 3D, and you'll notice that it has a script attached. Now, what happens is, if I delete the script... I'm going to add a new one. Um, this is the script that it comes with. So this script, someone working with working on the engine wrote this, so you'd have something just right out of the gate that you'd be able to use. So if I run this game, the character moves forward, it moves backwards, it moves left, it moves right, and it jump. And so if you just if you're making an environment and you want to see if it works or not, you don't need to work too hard to do that. But sometimes you want to do more scripts, right? So, for example, this is part of my Area 3D script. And currently this script doesn't do anything. It's, it's just saying we're going to take Area 3D or add, stuff to it, add, add some stuff to it, and then it doesn't add anything. Um, but you can, always, you can always add stuff. So, so first of all, um, you can add scripts to whatever you want. So what I can do, or, so for example, I can add a script to this camera, and now on ready, um, now let's take this camera 3D and have its position to have its position equal, you know, 300 seconds, 300. 300, 300. So what this will do is make my game not look very good. Ta-da! So that's that's a new script I just made, and it does exactly what you think it's going to. This ready function runs as soon as the game runs, and it runs so so the character the character body 3D. It does not have a ready function, but Previously, I was working with it, like when I was adding stuff, it did. This area 3D has already function, or sorry, this this, ca this camera 3D, this camera 3D has already function, um, and anything can have already function. So I can, for example, you know, func ready print ready, you know. So now we have. And then you know, let's just do the same thing for the character body 3D. This one says funk ready print character body. Right, so you can see that there's you know there's there's scripts the game gives you, there's scripts the game engine gives you, and there's scripts you can write yourself, and then you can always modify the scripts the game engine gives you, and in fact, I've explained this before, here's the comment, it tells you how to fix this, which I did, but I'm sort of replacing the code with the the sort of the code it gives you just to show this off. I'm not really going to develop this game further other than to just show off various things that my grandmother is a little confused about. So, now when I run this game, you can see, first of all, that it's you can't see what's going on, and second of all, that it's Printed some stuff in in the comments or in the console here, um, and that's you know that's a ready function, um, and so actually I should be able to remove this script entirely, and everything should still work. Well, work as well as it has been, and now let's let's take this camera three D. This is not something I want actually, because it makes the game very hard to see. So this pass command, basically, most programming languages, GDScript, which is what Godot uses included, 
don't like to have certain things be empty. It wants to have a, you know, and it has, it, it wants, if you do X, then do, if, if X is true, do, then do Y. And if you say, if X is true, and then don't put anything there, it gets upset. Now, what pass does is it sort of overrides that. So pass just means the thing that you're doing is nothing. CPU is happy with that. So now, when we run our game, you can see that it's back to where it was. This function is doing absolutely nothing. Um, and so having a, having a function set up this way is equivalent to not having a function, at least in terms of what the game looks like with and without it, right? How do I make music? That's the second question. It's pretty simple. I have a program called L LMMS. And I think I kind of want to leave it at that because, first of all, I'm not really happy with any of the music I've made, and second of all, there are far better places to to learn about LMMS and other things like it. This is a digi digital audio workstation, usually just called a DAW. Um, there are many of them. They're all fairly intercompatible. This is just the one I have. Um, but I'll, I'll show off like a very simple... So here's a triple oscillator. I don't know exactly what that is. If I click here, I open a piano roll, and then I can click, and we'll play it. Okay. okay, and now I can file export that as example dot okay so here I've got the music I just made it's exported it's all in here and now I just need to drag this into Godot yay and now I need a music player which I'll just attach to the world audio stream player wonderful and now what that's gonna do is Stream this, we, and then let's add a script here. And that should work. And that's how music works. Um, Let's see. Q camera zoom proportional to cube size. So this is something that I, I understand why you'd be confused about. Um, it's not the most intuitive. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing the scale. Um, scale times equals. Three. Vector 3 is just a way to hold three numbers at the same time. And because, as you can see over here, our scale is also three numbers, it's very convenient to do that. And now, let's see here. And the annoying music I just replaced. You can see here that because my camera is in a fixed position, every time the cube grows, it's just going to, um, you know, it's gonna, <laughs> it's going to scale relative to the world. But what I could do is put the camera as a child, and now you can see that when I jump, that um, because it's a child of it, when I move around, when I jump, that sort of thing, the camera is moving with it. And so what's what it looks like is that the world is getting smaller um, rather than the player getting bigger. And now in code, I just showed you this, I'm multiplying its size by 1.1 on all axes, so it is getting bigger. Um, but what's basically happening is, if you look in 3D, right, this camera here, this position transform and scale that's relative to the to the character body right so if i change this to be 5 
that distance is now relative to the character body 3D. So if we if we run the game now, it's much closer. I'm gonna stop this. Like, <laughs> I'm not actually a fan of that music. I was just making it to show off how music works. Anyway, um, so yeah, you can see that whether it looks like the cube is growing or whether it looks like the the world is getting smaller depends on where you place the camera. And for the game I was making, it made more sense to have the camera, you know, follow the player around like this, right? So that's, you can see that it's harder to see the whole level, but it's much easier to see what the character is doing, because you you're more zoomed in. And then as I get bigger, and it's a little solo at first, as I get bigger, um, you can see that it doesn't look like my player is getting bigger. It looks like the world is getting smaller. Um, but that's that's basically why. And now if I change the camera back to be its own thing, we can see that. Well, okay, it's, it's offset now, so I have to move the character over here. But we can see that the character looks like it's getting bigger. And the effect is much easier to see because the camera isn't scaling to it. If you attach a camera to something, the camera wants to wants to copy that thing as closely as possible. This camera it does not want to copy anything, it's just sitting there. And so it's happy to just even this even if this gets so big that it like completely envelops it. The camera's just gonna sit there. And let's let's update that script to be like it just doubles every time, right? So it should grow much, much faster. And now if we run the game, the cube just right, so the cube is now so big that the yeah, you can see its shadow here. Right? The cube is just absolutely massive and so it's so big that we're able to see the whole level from inside of it that's what's happened here and now we'll just take this uh camera and put it back as a child and now we see that when we double the cube yeah it just looks like the world's doing that and eventually it will look like the world isn't even there anymore I think that's a good answer to that question. Um, and yeah, there will be more. The series is popular, I enjoy making it, and my grandma is my biggest fan, so I should make, be making videos for her. But those are the, those are the three remaining questions that, that she had that I was able to answer. Um, and so that's all today. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching the video. I am trying to do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule about 3 p.m. release time. So yeah, plenty of time there. And then starting probably next week, when when my video releases, I'm also going to start streaming. Um, so if you see if you see this if you see a video next Monday, and you think wow it would be cool to watch more stuff like that, there's not going to be a new video for you, but there will be a live stream that you might enjoy. All right, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends all that good YouTuber stuff, and have a lovely rest of your day.